What is an emotion? When generally looking at emotions, people think of them as feelings like happiness, anger, and sadness. In psychology, we know emotion as a complex state of feelings that results in physical and psychological changes that influence thought and behavior. Why do we have emotions? Emotions are functional assets that develop automatic and efficient coping responses that help us fix life's fundamental problems. So, emotions are fundamentally good, but they aren't always helpful. Emotions can hurt us when they are situationally inappropriate, come at the wrong time, or when they occur at the wrong level of intensity. This is why we must practice emotion regulation to ensure that our emotions will promote healthy mindsets rather than control us. Emotion regulation refers to how we try to manage our emotions in response to experiences or situations. We want to be able to change an emotion's magnitude, latency, and duration so that we can react in a socially appropriate manner or so that the next time we experience that emotion, we can do so in a way that will overall benefit us. In other words, it's a process in which we keep our emotions in check. Say when you wake up in the morning and you feel grumpy, but you don't want it to show when you're going to work. This is a simple example of regulating your emotions to continue on with your daily life. To further explain emotion regulation, we need to dive into what strategies can be used during the process. There are hundreds of effective strategies people use when managing their emotions, but unfortunately, we don't have enough time to explain all of them. However, we found that one man was able to decode five strategies that represent categories or families of the many others. Here are the five strategies that James Gross, one of the first psychologists to study emotion regulation, has chosen to discuss in his article, Emotion Regulation in Adulthood, Timing is Everything. Following with that, we've provided examples to help explain the role of each strategy. The first strategy is situation selection, which is exactly as it sounds, choosing the situation you're going to be in to influence what type of emotional experience you're going to have. Imagine after a breakup with your significant other, you decide to go out with your friends instead of staying home and dwelling on the situation. This is an example of situation selection. The second strategy is situation modification, which refers to how the person in the situation tries to modify what's happening. While you're out with your friends, they might ask you what happened to your significant other. You can change the subject so that you don't have to think about the negative feelings, or maybe you choose to explain what happened instead. What you decide to do here will affect the rest of your emotional flow, so it's important to be aware of your actions. The third strategy is attentional focus, which is where and how much you are focusing on the experience. If you're going out with your friends, are you fully invested in what everyone's doing? Or are you checking your phone to see if your significant other has contacted you? Where you direct your attention is an important part of emotion regulation. Next is reappraisal, which is changing how you think about the situation in order to change what it's making you feel. After hanging out with your friends and you're driving home, you're thinking about the breakup again. Maybe you were wrong to react that way and you should apologize. Or maybe you were right and you shouldn't feel bad about what happened. During reappraisal, we are constantly thinking of how to go about the situation and all the possible outcomes. The last strategy is suppression, which involves subduing or suppressing your emotions. Gross states that unlike the four previous strategies, suppression is reactive to the emotional experience. Compared to attentional focus and reappraisal, suppression can be ineffective in regulating negative emotions. Say while you were out with your friends and you chose to not talk about what happened after they asked. You suppressed your thoughts and emotions. This could have negative outcomes, as Gross states that suppressing your emotions usually produces more, not less, of that emotion. So, we've broken down the process and explained how emotion regulation works. With the example we provided, we've shown you just how many opportunities you have to regulate your emotions in one situation. It can be as automatic as waking up grumpy in the morning and not wanting to show that at work, or it could be as complex as going through a breakup. Either way, learning to regulate your emotions is an essential part of your overall well-being and growth. The mind and body are connected to each other, and when you feel good, you'll feel motivated to do things for yourself and others.